Nice. Chapter 5.3, this is derivatives of inverse functions at a point. So let's talk about properties of inverse functions. Uh, with a function and its inverse, uh, these are properties between the function and its inverse. Uh, X's and Y's are swapped. So uh, if 4, 1, order pair 4, 1 exists on uh, the original function and on the inverse, uh, there must be 1, 4 on that graph as well. They're always going to be symmetry in terms of their order pairs uh, being um, flip-flopped um, uh, at each of their points. Uh, domain and ranges are also swapped. So uh, the, the domain is the range on uh, the, uh, the domain of the original function is the range of the inverse. And the range of the original function is the domain of the inverse. Okay. Graphs are symmetric over the line y equals x. So here's an example here where uh, we can think of it as a function and its inverse are always, you can always fold um, over the line y equals x and uh, your function and inverse will always overlap um, exactly. Right? f of x must be one to one uh, in order to pass the, uh, uh, pass the horizontal line test in order for its inverse to be a function. Uh, a function that is monotonic, that means it's always increasing, uh, will always have an inverse that is a function. So what that means is if you have a graph that is always increasing, let's say y equals x cubed, then its inverse um, will pass the vertical line test. Uh, however, if you have a graph, let's say y equals x squared, y equals x squared um, does not pass the horizontal line test, so that means that its inverse, um, which is like a sideways parabola, will not pass the vertical line test. Okay, so example four, find the inverse of y equals 6x plus 2. So the steps that we take to find its uh, inverse function is we switch the x and y. So y initially is y equals 6x plus 2. We switch the x and y, we get x equals 6y plus 2. Solve for y, we subtract 2 from both sides, divide by 6 x minus 2 over 6 is our inverse function. Okay. And we always restrict the domain of the inverse function to the range of the original function. So for example, um, y equals uh, root x minus 5. Find the domain of the inverse function. So uh, here we have y is equal to square root of x minus 5. Now square root of x minus 5 is simply a graph um, that it, that exists that starts off at five zero and moves um, increases uh, towards infinity. Now the domain for this original function is from five to infinity. The range is from the y value of zero to infinity. Now this is asking for the domain of the inverse function. All right, we know the domain and, and uh, range are going to be flip-flopped uh, between the function and its inverse. So therefore, the domain of the inverse function will simply be the range of the original function. So domain of the inverse function will just be the range of uh, the inverse. So therefore, from 0 to positive infinity. Okay, uh, so moving on to evaluating the derivative of an inverse at a point. Um, I have a graph here just to show uh, the relationship um, or the visual between a function and its inverse. Let's say this top function here is f of x, and let's say this bottom function is f inverse of x. All right, notice that you see uh, here we have um, uh, the line y equals x. We see a function and its inverse are symmetric about the line y equals x. And if I have a point, 1, 4, that exists on the original function, then 4, 1 must exist on the inverse function, right? That is just going to be a, uh, a property that's going to exist for every function and its inverse. Now, uh, the relationship in terms of the slope through these points uh, is also, there's also a relationship there. So if you can imagine, let's say the slope through the tangent line, uh, the slope of the tangent line uh, to the curve at this point, let's say the slope here is 7. Okay? So at corresponding um, uh, at uh, point 0.14, the slope is 7. 
Now let's look at the inverse function. There's a corresponding point at 4, 1 because um, 1, 4, and 4, 1, these are corresponding points. Um, and th through this corresponding point, if we find the slope of the tangent line, this slope will be always the reciprocal of uh, the slope of the corresponding point of its inverse function. So uh, if this is slope of 7, then this slope of the tangent line must be equal to 1 seventh. Okay? It will just be a direct reciprocal. It will, it will, you will not change signs. You will just take uh, the slope and then you just flip it. Okay? So that's what highlighted. That, that is what is highlighted here uh, in this um, uh, table that I have here. Um, f of b is equal to a and then f inverse of a equals b. This just highlights the fact that a function and its inverse uh, are always going to have order pairs that are flipped. And at the corresponding points, f prime of b is equal to n, whatever that slope is. The derivative of f inverse of a must be equal to the reciprocal of this slope. So this is slope n, then this must be slope 1 over n. So example 6, x cubed plus 4x plus 2 is our function. Find the derivative of f inverse at negative 3. So uh, I'm going to let g of x represent f inverse. Okay, so let's say we want to find g prime of 3. That is our goal here. So right now we don't have that 1 7th yet. Now, uh, we know that we're trying to find g prime of 3. We know that negative 3 must be the x value of my inverse function. Now, if negative 3 is the, is the x value of the inverse function, then we know that negative 3 must be the y value of the original function. Right? The order pairs will always be flip-flop. So if I know that negative 3 is the y value of my original function, then I can use that information to help me find the x value of my original function. So I can set negative 3 equal to my function. So negative 3 is equal to x cubed plus 4x plus 2. I subtract 3 from both sides. Or actually, I can just um, add 3 to both sides. I got x cubed plus 4x um, plus 5. And I just go through a series of guess and checks because I can't factor this out. If I try and figure out what is the x value that will make this statement true, uh, it'll be x equals negative 1. So x neg equals negative 1 will be when y is negative 3. Now, if the order pair for the original function is negative 1, negative 3, then for the inverse, it must be negative 3, negative 1. Okay, so now let's go and see if we can determine what f prime of negative 1 is. Because if we can find f prime of negative 1, then we can use that information and find the slope at the inverse function at this corresponding point. So to find f prime of negative 1, I first need to find f prime of x. To find f prime of x, I go through power rule. So x cubed becomes 3x squared, 4x becomes 4. We plug um, negative 1 into the derivative. When we do that, we get 3 times negative 1 squared, which is 3. 3 plus 4 is 7. So my slope uh, for this original function is going to be 7, which means the reciprocal, that means um, for its inverse function, the slope must be its reciprocal. So the slope there will be 1 7. All right, example 7, we have f of x equals q, uh, square root of x cubed minus, uh, minus 7. Find the derivative of f inverse at 1. So to do that, um, we know that I'm going to again let g of x represent uh, my f inverse function. So I want to find g prime of 1. Um, which means that the x value for our x for our g function is 1. So if 1 is the x value for the inverse, then 1 must be the y value of, this, of, uh, of the original function. So if we know y is the, 1 is the y value of the original function, I can use that to help me find the x value of the original. So replace y with 1, solve for x, cube both sides, 1 equals, square, sorry, square both sides, 1 equals x cubed minus 7, add one, 8 to both sides, solve for x, we get x equals 2. So the order pair for the original function is 2, 1, which means that for its inverse, it must be 1, 2. If I can find f prime of 2, then I can use that to find g prime of 1. So to find f prime of 2, we first need to get to f prime of x. To get to f prime of x, we can look at our function and realize that we have to go through chain rule, bring down the 1 half, keep the parentheses, subtract 1 from the exponent, multiply by the inside function's derivative. We clean this up, and then we can plug 2 into the derivative function, and we get 12 over 2, 3 times um, 2 squared, which is 12. 
2 cubed is 8, 8 minus 7 is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, so we get 12 over 2, which is 6. If the derivative at 2 is 6, then um, the, the uh, derivative of its inverse at the corresponding point, which is at 1, must be the reciprocal, which is 1 sixth. All right, the last two are more um, concept questions. Um, we know here uh, g of f of x equals x, and I should have said that f of g of x is equal to x to confirm that f and g are inverses of each other. So that should be repeated here, uh, for example, 9 as well. Right. So let's say we have, we, we're trying to find um, f prime of 2. So to find that prime of 2, we know the x value for my function, for my f function is at 2. So however, I know that g of 7 is equal to 2. So uh, its inverse function has 7, 2, which means that um, the, the inverse must be at 2, 7. So that means if I can find g prime of 7, then I can use that to find f prime of 2. g prime of 7, they told us, is 10. So f prime of 2 must be the reciprocal of that, which is 1 tenth. So f prime of 2 is equal to 1 over 10. Okay, last example, um, g of f of x equals x. I should also say f of g of x is equal to x to confirm that f and g are inverses of each other. g of 9 equals 3. g prime of 9 equals negative 4. Um, find f prime of 3. So f prime of 3. Uh, we know 3 is the x value of the inverse function, so I can pl put the 3 here. They tell us that g of 9 is equal to 3. If g of 9 is equal to 3, then no f of 3 is equal to 9. That's just the relationship there of inverse functions that is um, uh, told to us at the beginning of the problem. g prime of 9, they tell us, is negative 4. We have um, um, consistent x values for our g function. So g prime of 9 is equal to negative 4, which means that I can find f prime of 3 by taking the reciprocal of this, of this uh, slope. So the reciprocal of negative 4 is simply negative 1 over 4. So f prime of 3 is equal to negative 1 over 4.